excluding yourself, you know, I mean, who, and, and let's exclude Ar Louis Armstrong, okay? Who else did, did you really think uh, ought to belong on the top five, on the first team of oh, trumpet man, players? So many people. You mean just in jazz? Yeah. Um, I have to say uh, Roy Eldridge, Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis when he played jazz. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just heard that new album with, from Montreal with Quincy. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know that's, what? That's unfortunate. Right. Uh, What's unfortunate? Just, you know, just sometimes you make decisions in, in your life. And well, that, that what? That Miles left jazz or, or, or was taking it somewhere just, else rather than... No, it's just a certain type of spiritual decay becomes evident when you make decisions. Right. Whether you're Miles Davis or Wynton Marcellus or whoever you are. Yeah. And that's something that's been chronicled in the history of art. It's a right. famous story in, in art of somebody who's endowed with a gift and they decide to use the charisma and their gift in another way. Than, than what they went out with it, either because of the fame or because of the money, because of the disappointment in what people do. It's a story of heroism. The fact that when you're given something, you have that that the thing on you, and your personality gets enriched by that struggle. Yeah. yeah. How, you know, it's like the story in the Bible of Moses in the Promised Land. Yeah. How after he did all of that, just because he didn't do what he was told to do one time, he didn't get to see the Promised Land. It's a story. You know, he says, well. Uh, strike the rock or something. He cast a he cast a rod down, and God said, "No, that, that's not what yeah. you were supposed to do." So after all of that, all of what Moses did, still, uh, this is what he had to deal with, and that's just one story. Yeah. And when you turn your back on it, something different yeah. happens. What have you wanted to do that you haven't been able to do? Well, I always wanted to have a big band, yeah, and and play with them, and I always wanted to be surrounded you, by. I, I went in Marsala's band. Yeah, or just any, it doesn't even have to be my band, just to play with a band full of musicians who are all equally serious. Yeah. Like, and who all really want to swing and play jazz and develop yeah. the music. Is everybody. anybody doing that anywhere? Not on the level that I'm talking about. I mean, in, the in younger, terms of that quality of the musicianship. modern jazz quartet and Betty Carter and their musicians out yeah. there who still play. Why, like why can't you do it? Because a lot of what my aspirations are are tied into my generation. So I have to wait for guys to, to, to come up who want to play. I have to wait for people to learn the history of music a certain way. I have to hope that it's a certain level of seriousness there. Yeah. I have to, and it's hard for younger people to want to play jazz because there are very few jobs and it's very difficult to learn how to play things like the blues in this particular era. How many members of an orchestra would there be? 16 or 17. 16 or 17. We got you and we got Marcus Roberts, right? <laughs> right. right? That's two. Oh, we no, I, I know. The, I mean, I'm going to put musician. together a band this summer to, to go out yeah, and play. But but there are other things like I would like to be teaching a high school and have an orchestra like to play the classics of Beethoven yeah. and conduct them and then have a jazz band too. But you, next summer you're going to put together a band. Yes. Yeah. Why do you wait for the summer? Because you got other obligations. Well, just because it's hard. I have to have the work a certain way. I have to be, have the time to write arrangements. I have to get it all organized the way I want it. Uh -huh.